Football fans are obsessed with drama. And football has even more drama than a scripted TLC show. It take about six minutes for the baby to be into the world. Oh, can my heart beat so, so fast. I'm just watching, waiting for one to baby. That right there is peak cinema. From we day one day transfer sagas like the Mbappe to Real Madrid story that's been running for what feels like forever at this point, thank God that's over. To rich American men buying up Premier League clubs after 10 minutes on Football Manager and buying up all the wonder kids in sight. Football drama is a never ending cycle and today we are looking at something every football fan owes dear, a good old fashioned comeback. And these are some of the greatest comebacks in football history, in my opinion. So don't leave any angry comments if you don't agree. What? What was that? I should start the fucking video. Number five, Lukaku shushes the haters. Look, Manchester United, yeah? They are the team that somehow finds a way to push it off when you least expect them to. They live for the moment where so everyone writes them off. 12 games into Ole's reign as Manchester United manager, he was handed his first loss in a round of 16 Champions League first leg match against PSG with goals from Mbappe and Kimpembe. They could have arguably gotten more, but David De Gea was on his best behaviour. Going into the second leg, Manchester United would be without 10 first team players, including Jesse Lingard and Anthony Martial, after losing both players to injury during the first leg. But the biggest loss was arguably Paul Pogba on a red catch, who was in the middle of one of his best seasons in the United States statistically. The table seemed set for PSG to advance to the quarterfinals in front of their own fans. But Manchester public enemy number one, Romelu Lukaku, who'd won't go back off a Tilokera mistake inside two minutes to set the tone for the night, and the comeback was on. If you are wondering what the defender was thinking, I still don't know, but sub to the channel so one day I'll be able to meet him and ask him why. Ten minutes later, PSG would grab an equalizer on the night with a Julian Bernard stopping, seemingly putting them back in the driving seats. But the football god said, hold our tea and let us cook. As Italian legend Gigi Buffon spilled a Rashford shot 30 minutes in and Lukaku was there to finish it off. PSG came close to getting a second goal on multiple locations and even had the ball in the net once, but they had their goal ruled out by VAR. Going into the 90th minute, it seems like the French Giants would just escape with a win, but the personnel Kimpembe and Ball gifted Manchester United the penalty, which Marcos Rashford put away beautifully. A two-goal lead might not seem like much, but given the stakes and the number of players United were missing, I think it deserves this spot. Number 4. Corner taking quickly. This list is Champions League heavy, and the next on the list is Liverpool's incredible comeback against Barcelona during the 18 19 season. Club called his players mentality monsters, and it has never been more evident than in this Champions League tie. After a first leg where they did everything they could, but the ball just refused to go in the net. I mean, how did they miss from this position? Lionel Messi and Suarez put them to the sword to put Barcelona 3 0 up after 90 minutes. Let's take a second to appreciate this Messi goal. Just pure hearts. Just to run it into the net. Messi. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Just when you... Going into the second leg, Liverpool were missing Salah and Firmino, part of their famed front three, and anyone would have been forgiven for thinking Lionel Messi would finally achieve his long-standing promise to the Camp Nou faithful of bringing the Champions League trophy back home in a night that perfectly describes Liverpool as a football club according to Jordan Club. Just about everything went right for the underdog as they got off to a flying start with an absolute gift of a goal after a mistake from Jordi Alba. It just seems like you need a bit of assistance from the opposition anytime you are making a comeback. Because Jordi Alba also missed a gifted chance that would have surely put the game beyond doubts. The turning points would come after half time though, as Gini Wijnaldum was subbed on. Just 8 minutes after the break, he got on the end of a trademark Alexander Arnold cross after yet another Jordi Alba mistake. This guy was playing for a Liverpool contract. Origi and Wijnaldum are deservedly caught heroes. <laughs> but please, respect Jordi Alba. Two minutes later, the three goal Barcelona cushion was deservedly erased with a sublime header from Super Sub Wijnaldum, sending Anfield into a frenzy. And then came the goal that we all know too well. Corner taking quickly, and no one looked more shell shocked than Lionel Messi. You know, watching this back, even though it was a poor performance all round from Barcelona, that never give up mentality from club's teams are just what makes them dear to my heart. Number three, Aguero. According to Mark Ogden of ESPN, this was a moment that defines the Premier League era, and it's hard to argue with that. 
It's a goal that every football fan around the world knows by name. Going into the final day of the 2011-2012 season, Manchester City and Manchester United were tied on points, but City held the advantage on goal difference, needing just a win to confirm their first Premier League trophy in 44 years. On paper, it seemed easy enough. City were facing a relegation threat in QPR, but on the pitch, it was an entirely different situation. As City found themselves down 2-1 against 10 men going into extra time, while Manchester United players held the belief that the Premier League trophy was as good as won. Just another day silencing the noisy neighbours after they did their part with a 1-0 win at Sunderland, courtesy of a win Rooney go. City needed 2 goals in 4 minutes of extra time and even the most optimistic of City fans were losing hope. But come the 92nd minute, Edin Dzeko grabbed the equaliser from a Davis Silva assist and the stage was set for Aguero to grab the most iconic Premier League goal of all time and earn the citizens the Premier League trophy. Aguero! Staggering! Just staggering! Number 2. The Miracle of Istanbul One of the most exciting Champions League finals of all time, Milan were considered as the clear favourites going into the final, with a star-studded squad that included players like Kaka, Sidov, Pelu, among other legends. I'm looking at the starting eleven right now, <laughs> and I burst out laughing. What a joke. How do you be in a starting eleven of just football legends? Every single position is filled with legends. I've decided that this AC Milan squad doesn't get enough slander for losing this match after being up 3 0. Imagine this team losing this game in the exact same way in 2024. With social media, they took the lead just 50 seconds in off a Paolo Maldini Voni and added a second in the 39th minute through an Ancrespo. The Milan players would have been sure they put the game beyond reach when they got that third goal in the 44th minute. Yes, that pass from Kaka amazes me too to this day. And it was Gerard that answered the call and started the comeback with his 54th minute header, urging his teammate's son as he ran back to the halfway line. And just two minutes later, Vladimir Smaisha had the ball in the net, but Liverpool weren't done just yet. A Sabi Alonso goal in the 60th minute completed a remarkable six minute turnaround, erasing everything Carlo Ancelotti's boys had done over the course of the first half. AC Milan did come close to get some more goals, but Dudek put on his Superman cape and carried Liverpool to the win on penalties, marking the fifth Champions League title for the English club. Number 1. La Remontada Now, quick caveats. I strongly believe PSG were robbed by multiple dodgy refereeing decisions over the course of the game, but it doesn't stop me from appreciating the sheer difficulty of the task. Even if they had help, the Barcelona players still had to put the ball into the net. Angel Di Maria put PSG in the driving seat after the first leg with a wonderful performance on his birthday and PSG went into the second leg holding a 4 new lead. All they needed to do was play a solid game and make no mistakes and they would be in the quarterfinals. Three minutes in, they make a defensive mistake and set back on their way to a comeback. Then Kozawa literally put the ball into his own net. Play a solid game and make no mistakes, mission failed. The game really became a shit show after this. I remember seeing the ref give that first penalty and I just felt the robbery coming. No. No. <laughs> no. PSG should also have gotten one or two penalties in their favor, but the refing was just odd on the day. PSG did get an all important away goal in the 62nd minute that probably should have been the end of the tie, but Neymar turned on the magic with a wonderful free kick, giving the Camp Nou faithful just that little bit of hope once more. Another dodgy ref decision followed in the 91st minute and it was 5 5. The ref just made it such a poor game to rewatch. Yes, PSG bottled it, but there were just too many bad decisions that put sustain on that final goal. We all know it's too well. Neymar cross, Roberto goal, and La Remontada was born. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please slap a like on it. Sub to the channel so I can get monetized at 1k. I've got kids to feed. Let me know in the comment section what kinds of videos you'd like to see from me. Bye bye.